Hello everybody, FAI here or I here, and welcome back to FAI Tips and Tricks on Motorsport Manager, or welcome to Motorsport Manager, and um, FAI Tips and Tricks Ultimate Guide on how to play Motorsport Manager and be successful. Now, you're probably thinking, I, I've seen people who've done Ultimate Guides on Motorsport Manager before. I've watched people who are doing, who've done a little bit of a playthrough on Motorsport Manager. I kind of have an idea of how to play. Well, you may have kind of an idea of how to play, but remember, all those guides, all those tips and tricks, all those people who were playing Motorsport Manager in the in the past, were probably playing in 2016 or maybe even in or maybe even in 2017. So very very early patches of the game. My ultimate guide is during and as of the latest patch in the game, and because this is as of the latest patch in the game, we are able to um you know show you what not only what's new. But also, how to do um, these tips and tricks. How to do these things. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the backstory. Now, I've already kind of predefined the character, as you'll see here. And EX Driver is a way for you to be um, ha not only able to have better feedback with your team, but also able to give you a chance to... You know, have better driver improvement when you choose someone who has huge potential going forward. The next driver after that, it, or backstory should I say after that, is mechanic. Now, being a mechanic means that you were a mechanic in the pit lane before, which also means that you gain development or you can get better development um, by one day or via like one day less than everyone else um, with your mechanic skill. Being a, um, the other, the next back story is political. Being a political, um, means, or it's either political or financial. I'll go over both, so don't worry. But being polit political means all your votes are always going to be free. You always have plus four bat, um, voting power right off the bat, which means that you can swing any vote that you want right off the bat or from the get go. And it also means that you're going to be able to change any rule you want in any division that you want. And, of course, there's financial. Financial means that you'll be paying less for each transaction going forward. This will make it much easier for those of you who want to do rapid development or want to do fast development and fast transactions or whatever. Um, that will help you a little bit. Um, in my personal opinion, I personally like the EX Driver perk. Because the EX Driver perk pretty much um, gives you the, um, you know, gives you the benefit of having the best feedback from your drivers as well as the best development from your drivers. And of course, the last backstory is unknown, at least from the non-locked, um, you know, perks. There is one locked perk if you got the M MWR mode, ro ro uh, Motorsport Manager, um, Motorsport Manager Challenge Pack, which is... Um, like superstar or something like that but i do not know what that perk does and i do not have it that perk as this um guide is coming out now when i do unlock that perk i will tell you what that perk does i will give you a separate video on what that what that perk is essentially um about but for now of course these are the perks so with that being said let's go ahead and move on to the next um part which is design which is of course deciding what is your team what is the team about where is your team based and what what do you want to do for your team in this case we are going to be using the create team um model we're not going to be playing playing with or taking the role of principal of predator racing or even some other racing like sylvia racing or whatever the challenge is we are starting from the world sport or tier free um <clears throat> we will be starting from the tier free um 
backstory, which means we are going to be expecting to start from the back of the grid and eventually move our way up or roll our way up to the top of the grid. <sighs> now, this is not a bad thing if you are kind of one of those players who are like, well, I want to make sure that I can get the rain right. And if you do want to get the rain right, then um, I would expect you to start from the very low end of the grid, rather than the GT circuit, the single seeker circuit, or in the um, endurance circuit. Now, obviously, the ultimate guide, I will talk about um, the differences between the GT circuit and the, um, and of course, the endurance circuit um, in the future in the future part of the series, but for now, we're focusing mostly on the single seer circuit, which, um, you know, the single seer circuit is basically a way for you to just get your hands on the reins and kind of start getting an understanding of the game. But with that being said, of course, here we are creating a team. So, of course, as you saw, there's the single seer circuit, GT, and endurance, um, you can choose a team if you want. Choosing a team will allow you to take the reins of a team and build them up, um, or build them or um, keep them at the top of the challenge. But in this case, we're going to start focusing on the single series circuit, and of course, then um, moving from bottom and getting to your top. So the GT circuit and the endurance circuit are also new. But you could take the reins and create a team for the GT or the endurance circuit if you want to. I will go over, like I said before, um, the differences between the GT circuit and the endurance circuit. But that is not today. Today, we're working on the single seer circuit. Now, if you're feeling like you really want to start in the World Motorsport um, tier, which is tier 3, you can. You can also look at the rules if you want, if you need an idea of the rules. Um, or you can start on a lower team and then move your way up. I would highly suggest that you start on the lowest team and then just build your way up if you want to. Because at the end of the day, you're probably not going to have a card that can realistically um, be as good as it needs to be. And, you know, because you're not going to realistically have a card that can be as good as it needs to be. Then, you know, working on anything other than the high Working on a high tier circuit would mean that you're going to get demotion, a demotion anyway. So, at the end of the day, we're not going to talk about the demotions and promotions and stuff. That'll be um, for pre-second season or before your second season starts. But just note that you will probably get demoted if you are starting on the World Sport Management or World Sport um, Circuit and then you move, um, you move forward. So... We're starting on the European race circuit racing series, so this is a low tier or low end series, and um, here we are just creating the design and the name of our team um, for our car. And as you'll see, you'll cut, you'll see me have cut ahead because I did a lot of time trying to design and figure out what we wanted our um, the car to look like. And this is the design I pretty much settled with. Um, after all that editing stuff, so, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the design, this is the, our first season's car, and the car that we're going to be driving, or our team will be driving, uh, going forward into this, uh, first season, so, with that being said, um, let's talk about the, um, investors, or the, um, investment op offers that we can get. You can start with Root Gaming, which gives you a free star cast right off the bat. This could make it easier for you to be, um, to be, um, in better position going forward for, um, for challenges and stuff. But you also have a low tier financial package. You could choose Stonewall Bank. Stonewall Bank will give you a medium package. While also giving you a medium financial objective. Now, by you choosing Stonewall Bank, you will have marketability right off the bat. And then the last thing is, of course, Golden Tiger. And Golden Tiger will, of course, give you more, um, more chance to um, have a high financial package. But you'll have a lot of pressure and you start with the test track. But anyway, with that being said, let's get into the actual base of the nitty gritty of the... Um, <clears throat> of the game. So the nitty gritty of the game is, of course, you first gonna check out the uh, 
the scouting. Um, just scout out whoever you want. Favor all your favorite people as you as I've done here. I did that off often. Um, because at the end of the day, right now we won't have anybody to um financially pick up for drivers, and oh, we don't know um. And we don't know what the drivers are like um, going forward. So, you know, just pick whoever you want um, going forward and choose whoever you want. Um, with that being said, um, yeah, we have emails and we want to choose our um, <clears throat> our goal for the season. Now, we could go ambitious and say we were going to look towards going in eighth place. But financially, we probably won't be able to. Um, get into that eighth place position because we do not have the car as you'll see we have 10 races um, Going forward and each race has their own tire wear tire dag um, fuel burn and all that other jazz that um, You got to worry about so, you know, you got to keep an eye on your financial your your bank and stuff and just being able to Stay out the the race without you know going overboard um, so development on the car. I mean, we obviously do not have a car at all right now. So let's take the lowest um, You know goal right now, which is 10th place because we are not that ambitious to make an eighth place goal And even if we were that ambitious to make an eighth place goal, we wouldn't probably make it up there So yeah <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go with a cheap financial package going forward right now because at the moment, of course, our, if we set our budget to high or medium, we're probably going to be paying more out of pocket just to try and keep save or keep more money for the next year's car that we probably wouldn't be able to, um, you know, save anyway or get anyway. So, you know, at this point, there's no real reason for us to financially um, go for a high end um, payment or a high end um, save on the car and whatnot. So I would financially say just, you know, set your investments to low rather than fat stacks or medium because as you can see, if you put fat stacks, you're going to be paying almost two million dollars for each for each race for the car. And that doesn't include your drivers or your staff that you're paying as well. Now when it comes to HQ development, I mean obviously you know we want to develop it to where we can get a road factory, a um a you know touring center and a theme park um which will allow us to make more um <clears throat> more money going forward but obviously at this point we don't have the financial to do that so we could always build a new building if we want to but i would suggest if you are going to do your first upgrade um in this game then you upgrade towards um having a tour center this way you can make a little money off the hq from time to time and you can make your finances a little bit better overall um but when it comes down to it for your upgrade i would highly upgrade the um hq first that way you can um you know financially make yourself into a better position for um a better position for um, <clears throat> your um, upgrade your factory first that way you can make yourself better in the position of R&D for developing or researching and developing your um, your car going forward um, but with that being said I mean I would suggest that you upgrade your factory first um, take the time to do that because again it'll make you a much better team going forward development wise and it'll also help you in the next season and go every season going forward. So that's my suggestion. With that being said, though, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on to talking about staff. And, you know, you'll see me just kind of go over the glance because, like I said, again, we want to focus on getting the tour center eventually, which means that we got to focus on the factory development and, uh, of course, the um, design center development. But, of course, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to talking about development or improving your parts. Now, at the top point, we do not have the factory to order the factory to design as many parts as we would like. But, every time we upgrade the factory, we will increase our slots by two, which means that we can basically start developing and pathing out a development for, um, you know, for better parts and whatnot. 
But, of course, let's talk about our staff. Now, obviously, like I said before, um, when it comes to scouting out drivers, just scout out whoever you want. When it comes to our um, <clears throat> our designer, we want someone who's good. And I've already picked out somebody who's good in this video. You'll, you'll see who I picked out. Um, but I would recommend that you try to get somebody who can get in for the long term. Uh, because, again, by having a long term um, head designer, you will not only be able to, you know, scout, keep them as their contract runs out. But you'll also be able to, in time, give it, make sure that you have a team that can help you or a staff that can help you develop the car going forward for the long run. Um, now, some designers may not want to join you like other designers will, but um, you'll see me pick out this one designer here, who's part of our, one of our rival, one of our top per or head teams or top teams, aka Eastwood Motorsports. And, um, yeah, they're interested, of course, to join us. So, we're going to go ahead and, um, talk to them, try to get them into our team, and hopefully have a, um, you know, good chance of negotiating a, uh, deal with them. Now, as you can see, they have a pretty decent, um, you know, knowledge when it comes down to brakes, engine, um, gearbox, all that stuff. So, at the end of the day, they're a pretty decent driver or mechanic designer for us to look into. And because we're not of any um, norality or we don't have anything that can give us a um, chance to realistically get a better designer at the moment, we should sell with um, someone like Roxian. Now, we're going to, as you can see, I'm going to max out the contract. We're going to give them almost 300000 for um, joining us and a bonus of 45,000 if we get 10 for above so um, it is um, something that we will be looking into and yeah I'm going to quickly do these things because again you'll see me just quickly work with the driving designers and mechanics because as I said I have a lot of time in this game um, so I've almost got like 400 hours or so, even more, um, going forward into this game. So I have a lot of experience with this game. I know exactly what I'm looking for when it comes down to this game. And, um, yeah, I'm going to just do the negotiations very, very quickly, as you'll see here. But, um, yeah, we're going to work towards getting these designers, these mechanics while on our team. Because the moment we get these designers and mechanics on our team, we will have a pretty decent, um, <clears throat> we will have a pretty decent, um, going forward, um, recent way of just perfecting our strategy and being able to, you know, get on the right foot towards designing next year's car and even being better for next year, um, which is something that we're we're expecting to do because again, as it is, our staff is terrible. At this point in time, our staff is terrible. Our designers are terrible. Um, we've got to make sure that we have everyone in motion, and to make sure that we have everyone in motion, we've got to just choose the people who are going to help us and keep us keep us up above everyone else so you know i would recommend choosing people who have at least three stars if you can yes they're going to be a little more expensive on your payroll but if you're good at managing your finances you're one step closer to having at least a better team overall because not only do we have to keep the chairman happy um we also have to make sure that our finances are in good position um, again, we're going to look at the scouts again because, um, you know, I wanted to show you the drivers here. And in the end of the drivers tab and everything, you know, you're going to see that, um, you know, we we got an idea of their base stats. So we know exactly kind of an idea of what they could present, present to us. But we want to know one other thing, which is marketability. How much marketability do they have towards us? How much marketability will we gain from having them on our team? And, you know, because we're looking at sponsors and we don't have any sponsors or anything right now, we got to have some drivers that right now have some marketability. This way, um, sponsors are going to come up to us and offer us money. The more sponsors that we can get that offer us great money, great um, deals, on, and all that other jazz um, going forward, 
means more development, more um, more chances to really improve our car and get our car to to the point where we can say, hey, look, we have all this development going on right now. We have all these, um, you know, parts going on. We have all this rigmarole, all these jazz, all this jazz going forward. We can offer you or we can, you know, show you that this is what we got. You know what I mean? And, you know, as it is, we're developing right now our engines, which I would recommend um, to work towards your reliability. I mean, give yourself more reliability. Give yourself a chance to realistically have, um, realistically, of course, have, um, you know, reliability. Now, when it comes to your development path, I would highly recommend that, you know, in the development path and in your development nature, um, you know, just focus on, you know, keeping the parts, um, keeping yourself in the green. Now, when it comes to developing a part F, I would say develop the next part that will help you in the next race because more than likely, you may not be able to get this um, part out by the first race. Now, also, also choose whatever development path improves your parts at their max, improves their parts in their best range, like give you more speed, more deacceleration, more top speed, or whatever. So, with that being said, um, also just kind of keep an idea of where your parts are via the calendar, um, because again, that will give you an idea of how much time you'll have between the days to improve or even just get the better parts out there. So with that being said though, of course now we are focusing on our sponsors, which when it comes down to our sponsors, we're just going past the days here, but when it comes down to our sponsors, we want sponsors that will give us money up front as well as help us lower our payments overall. So of course right now we don't have any sponsors. We have our one of our um, mechanics who want to renegotiate here. We have our the, um, mechanics here who we want to get um, to be renegotiating for PATH. So we're going to look towards that. Um, <clears throat> so we got that dilemma hopefully resolved. Um, we're going to give them a bare bonus and we're going to max out our payments with, um, you know, haul with our two mechanics and then we got this interview which i'm going to go over very very quickly don't worry this interview is very very quick we're just going to you know skim through it um if you want to know more about the interviews and stuff um please do feel free to ask me and i will try to tell you or explain those interviews a little bit more but most of those interviews are just to help morale with our drivers or help us get better marketability or even um worse marketability for some teams and as we look here um, one of our contracts did get accepted, um, so we got a, lead, a better lead designer, which we're paying a lot of money to get, but now we'll have them for at least the next three years, I believe, if I recall correctly, so the next few months, we'll be able to keep them on board, <laughs> which is great for us, because that means we're not going to have to worry too much about getting a better designer going forward at the moment. <laughs> the next thing, of course, is your pit crew. Your pit crew is going to be terrible for our time. So don't worry too much about, you know, getting the best pit crew out there. Because, you know, after a while, their contracts do expire. Their contracts will expire. So, you know, you've got to just be able to, um, in general, work with who you have. And work with what you got. So, um, you know, because you got to work with... here um so with that being said though um obviously um there's still other things to work with to work towards um you know obviously like we're going to have gossip about what's going on and of course here we go with our contracts again and it looks like our dry our mechanics that we wanted to hire did accept their contracts so that's great that means we now have a staff that's pretty comfortable with what we got, with what we can do. So, because we now have a staff that's pretty much able to comprehend or at least keep us in the game or maybe even a little bit ahead of the game for a while, um, yeah, we're going to keep continuing to um, push the limits for their um, 
you know, for them to help us develop and even just get uh, ahead of the game. Now you could switch which what side they're work on working on, but usually, um, most mechanics are are going to be set up to be good on whatever way they want to work on. And um, yeah, when it comes to the designs and stuff, um, here you saw me switch because I thought the parts were ready that we designed earlier. Um, which they were almost ready, but not completely ready. So, you know, and then now we got the parts saying that they're ready to be designed or worked on. So here we're working on the, dis on the reliability of our gearbox, which we will not have by this race, but we will be trying to get the gearbox into the race if we can. Um, obviously at this point, one of our drivers are going to become unhappy with the parts that we're adding for them, even though they are equal drivers. But we do not have the money to really put money out there to go, like, here, we're going to spend all this money to give equal parts to our drivers. Um, sadly, realistically, right now, we can't. Now, we did get our first sponsor here, Gender Mold Media. And while you're probably looking at them and going like, well, they're going to give me a 500,000 bonus payment if I get to A for above. Again, we don't have the car right now to, to realistically be part gender mall media because again we gotta work on our towards our finances we gotta make sure that financially we are sound with our the our um available budget so you know we're looking for sponsors that can give us some money we want money if we can help it not only a fixed payment but we want money that can give up that we can use to develop our car next year we can develop our car now so by having sponsors or marketability and people who can give us money now, we can start working towards development on the car immediately. We can start moving forward with our development and our development path. And we can just in general get better better parts and an overall better result. So, you know, we're going to just move on to the first race. And that's pretty much where we're going to Caught today, and I know this was a lot of information almost like 27 or so minutes of information right off the bat. But again, everything you need to know before your first race is a lot of information. Now, here, Carney Blanco wants to hire, wants to sponsor us for 200,000, and they will give us 200,000 spot, um, fixed payment. Now, I would highly accept. I would highly suggest that you accept this payment because, or accept this because not only will it lower your overall per race payment, but you'll also lower your, you'll also get some money to develop right off the bat, which will help you in general. And as you can see here, by having like cheap uh, car saving for next year and all, and the available budget that you have, you will be able to make sure that you have money or you're in the black in the black or in the green for developing next year's car and you're not just trapped onto saying like oh well i don't have that much money this year how do i you know how do i make it oh into next year or how do i develop next year's car without having the money or whatever and you know by being in the green by having a good race results you will have a chance to get more money from the gma and all that other jazz but for now, like it is, this is all you need to know uh, before your first race. This is everything you need to know before your first race. This is everything you need to know with getting started. And because of that, hopefully this has helped you with just getting started and learning everything you need to know um, going forward. Because, um, yeah, it's a lot of information. But at the end of the day, this information should help you. Um, work towards your development path and develop whatever you can um, towards the next race as you're going forward. All things that can improve your stats will help you, and I would highly suggest you do that. But, um, yeah, make sure that you can stay in the black as, as necessary. But with that being said, I mean, I hope that this has helped you, and I hope that you will... You are seeing improvements with this race. If you have any questions and you have and you need answers, feel free to put them in the comments below. I will try to answer them the best I can. But um, if I don't answer them in the comment section, I will integrate them into the next set of videos. As each one of these videos are getting pre-recorded going forward, um, and I'm 
rolling out at least two videos or at least one to two of these ultimate guide videos going forward. So with that being said, you probably somewhere saw a a plugin in in the video saying uh like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the Twitch channel. If we can get this video to 10 likes, that'd be amazing. But with that being said, I am live on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash FA underscore EYE or I. I am live on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday for sure. For about three hours until we start getting more interest into the channel. And yeah, with that being said, I mean, you know, to round out everything, you already know what to do. Look for sponsors that not only will pay you up front, but also will give you money. Um, money per race. Look for people who will, um, you know, lower your payments financially so you can have the available budget for next year's car. And even maybe a little extra to improve your HQ during the off season. But with that being said, I mean, thank you everybody for joining me today on this video. Thank you for watching this video. I will meet you back in the ultimate guide on your very first race to talk about how to manage your very first race in Motorsport Manager. But with that being said, until the next one, everybody, thank you for joining me today on this video. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for enjoying this video. I hope to see you possibly live on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash FA underscore UYE or I. But yeah, I will meet you back on our first race and how to manage your first race. Um, but with that being said, thank you everybody for joining me today on this video. Thank you for watching this video. And until the next one, everybody, this is FAI or I. Signing out and saying <clears throat> farewell, everyone.